I just welcome you, the audience. The audience knows me very well. They often come here to listen to what I have to say. And, and they be, many people have been coming here for years. There's always something good to, to discover, always. And, and because you come, you bring the best out of me. And otherwise I'm useless. And so are you. <laughs> There's got to be some kind of understanding of what, what's making the world go round and down. You see. And I have been given a gift to help you understand what you could never understand on your own. And if you did, you wouldn't have a mouthpiece to share it. I have 150 stations now. And most of them I don't have to pay for. But, but nine of them I do that it costs about $32,000 every month. This nine. But the others are commercial stations that are picking me up now. So something magical is happening. Okay? Everything bad happens for good for those who love the Lord. It's taken me all these years, just with those nine stations, all of a sudden, you know, our station got under attack and we, the, the rep firms wouldn't pay us, and then we start to collapse. But we still got 500 stations loyal to us. And they're putting me on. So, speaking to you as a small number of people here in a little town is more than you think. There's hundreds of thousands of people listening. Whether they support the program or not, is up to them, but I'd like to, to preface my remarks that if you like what you hear and it helps you, please support the foundation of human understanding. Because I, as I started to say when they, we stopped and we had to adjust my microphone, that my, my biggest love is not just for you, you're the ones that are being protected for your freedom, which you're wasting. Most people are waste, not you. You are, are beginning to abide by the, the light of the inner spirit. But most people do not know that even if they're Christians, which is the highest form of every religion, if it's understood properly, and not verse and chaptered. See? Like an like a, like a actor on the stage. It's a transcending of the need for verses and chapters and for learning the religion and acting it out on the stage of life. And so you are, le are learning to be whole and complete, but our soldiers are defending, defending now, without them understanding it, a country that has been, has been changed so that The one of two options that human beings have is to, is to love what's right or love what's wrong. And there's a freedom from right to do wrong and a freedom from wrong to do right. And many of the, most Americans have chosen or been corrupted. That's the word. They didn't choose it. I want to make it very clear. You do not choose to be a bad person. Nobody's born a bad person. Nobody. Not even Adolf Hitler. It is the, it's the environment into which you were born and there are forces at work that have changed the face of this country so that we think that freedom is pleasure and money and sex, and drugs. And as it rises to the occasion of your need for fulfillment, you become a bigger fool. You become worse. All that which makes you feel better and elevates you and makes you feel more like a person makes you less. And this is what I'm going to be talking to you about in this session today. And I don't really want to lecture. 
because some of the things I'm going to say are principles. And the principles that I'm going to be speaking about, you may know in intellect, in your intellect, but not able to express it in your life, in the way of life you have. You know what right and wrong is. I know all you do. You, you, you think you understand what good and bad is, and so therefore you try to do good, but that's too bad, <laughs> because you don't know what good is. But you think you do, and you keep trying. There's a principle there. And the more you struggle to make yourself better, the worse you get. So you can have the, the, the most shining face, comeliness, the most shining of all, and still be tormented and die from a horrible disease like cancer. And then people will say, why do good people die young like that? Well, you see, they are trying to be good by giving of themselves to everybody. But they're giving of themselves, meaning they're giving their life force that God gave them, in other words, by default, to other people. So, to make it clear, as I speak to you, I have not prepared anything, never do, never. Nothing in my life is ever prepared, ever. I don't know what I'm going to do next, nor do I plan for what's next. I just deal with what's next, with what is in me, to deal with it. So it feels like me, it, senses, it is the sense of, or the illusion of, that it's Roy that's doing this, he's Roy is clever. But Roy is not clever. Roy is not smart. Roy isn't the master of his destiny. I don't create my future or plan for it. I'm just doing what I'm told when I speak to you. So, to just make that point about being good, it's not good if you love me and think I have, I have cured you. Let's say you've been cured of a disease, or of a mental problem, or your family life gets better. You can appreciate me, but you cannot, you cannot think of me highly as a good person. Only God is good. The person is just the mouth speaker. You know, the, um, what do they call it? The messenger. The, yes, the messenger and the loudspeaker. See, the messenger. So it's like you listen to the radio. The radio is not any good to you. You hear nice things on the radio, but the radio isn't, the, isn't even says all the wonderful things in the world. The radio isn't doing it for you. It. It's what's behind the radio, in a manner of speaking, to make it a point. Interpreter boy. Yeah, in, well, we'll see. Please don't talk, Anne, until you have a microphone. Okay. She wants to talk so much. No. So we talk so much. Can you just be quiet here just for a little bit? Yeah. Okay, thank you. <laughs> um, so, where do I start from, start from? First of all, my goal, or a goal. And it just comes to me that this is necessary. I have to help, I have to help this country recover. There isn't anybody else who knows what to do. Now, I'm soft-spoken, or I can be loud. And today, because of my voice, I've been yelling at my wife a lot. <laughs> so, I'm speaking a little bit more quietly. But it will come to a point where I start to raise my voice a little bit. But what I really want in life, as long as I'm here... Money. Yeah, yeah, money. That's right. That's, yes, money. To, yes, I don't like to say it. You see, it's very hard for me to say that. And I'm not speaking to my audience here necessarily. I'm speaking to everybody who hears what I'm saying over the internet. And if I could help, if I can get to enough people, but especially the wounded warriors who have post traumatic stress disorder, I'd like them to be here and to invite them and, and pay their, their fare to come here from all over the country 
and I would spend the rest of my life and every day to help fix that. While doing the radio show at the same time, I can do that. And I will do that. I ha as old as I am, I can do it till I'm 100. And even if it's a little squeak, I still want to do it. And even if uh, I die, you just put my head on the, on the stick and make my mouth move <laughs> and put the tape on. <laughs> and then you can see me. <laughs> all made up. <laughs> no, but the thing is, I need to save those soldiers, they're dying. So you've forgotten what happened in the VA, <coughs> with all the VA domiciliaries, right? You, they only did was change the chief cook and bottle washer, the head of whatever it is, I don't know what, what moniker you give them. But this, all, the, the people who are neglecting our soldiers are still there, allowing them to die. The horror is everywhere. You should see the letters I'm getting from all over the country. Even in England it's happening that way. The nurses will make sure that a blind... I got the story, but I won't tell you all of it, because it's a horrible story. But one of the, there's a lady who is a nurse and she's also um, a chemist. And she went to work in a hospital in Wales. We have, a, we have a, an extension of the foundation in, in England, UK. And we have radio program there in Ireland, in the Republic of Ireland, and broadcasting to England. And he writes and, sa and says, my wife worked in a hospital and the nurse is... Uh, had a blind a, a veteran from World War II. And it, they, she kept the food out of his reach. So he has some frustration because he's not worth it. See, he needs to suffer. There is that going on everywhere. Even in, the, even in our own civilization, there's cruelty everywhere in our homes, in our schools, everywhere. And the is an evolution of evil over good. There are more people who have evil in them. This is spiritual warfare. There's more people, ordinary people, who are, have evil in them, but who are not intrinsically evil themselves. It means they cannot help but be a slave of bullies. And therefore, they're trying to do the best good that they know how. And I, that is where I come back to say, you don't know what good is. Because good is not giving in to a bully. See? The wages of sin is death. <clears throat> and all who sin are slaves. And we need to understand I'm not a preacher like everybody else, even though I may, I may do a little bit of quoting of the scriptures. All who sin are slaves. What the sin is, and what will kill you, and what will destroy the country, is you not standing up to anything. Hoping. Oh. I thought he wants to ask a question. <laughs> He's, not, he's only one year old, right? <laughs> oh, so you've been forgiven for that. <laughs> but do you understand what, what I'm saying? Is that your idea of good, it, it, it has prevailed for thousands of years. Thousands of years, good people, or people who want to be good and don't know what good is, and in their mind is yielding to, to go along to get along, to not get upset with those who are over them. For instance, the other day on the radio, there was a lady in, excuse the expression, a nut house. She was in, in a, what do they call it? The nut house came to it. What's the name of a nut house? Psychiatric ward. Yes, psychiatric ward. Thank you very much. It's a very, it's very sophisticated. 
<laughs> insane asylum. It's, it's very sophisticated. Thank you very much. But she can't get out. She, she's in prison. And she calls me. And she listens on the radio. She's getting better. And you can see it. And she says, what can I do? What can I do? They want to give me those pills. See? And I resent that. I said, don't. You are in a prison. You, in that prison, you need to submit, but not with anger. You submit through wisdom. You, you're cool. You see? And then you're going, and then you're going to stop that. that. That medicine that you take won't hurt you. It won't cure you, but it won't hurt you. Because you know you, but you have to take it. But the point is, in realizing that the doctor is doing the best he can because he doesn't know any better. There's a, there's a point of view where I said, forgive them, Father, for they know not what they do. So your psychiatrists have been trained to see every mental condition as standing alone. See? As a unique illness apart from all the others. Living in, existing in isolation. So you, tr you treat that. It's not all of them in reality has come from a spiritual warfare that's been going on for generations. <laughs> what a beautiful creature. It's all right. She has the cross and walk around. <laughs> <laughs> you understand that? So, see, what I'm giving is a situation where you have ended up in a prison. See? And that's where you are. And they're not going to let you go. And so they're going to give you the medicine, uh, medicine number 132, for a particular condition you have that treats the symptoms but not the cause. And you can go all the way back to the fact that you are resentful. And resentful and being upset is the root of your problem. So the more resentful you are, the more symptoms you will have. And not just till you get post-traumatic stress disorder or suicidal thoughts, but also your physical, your, also your physical uh, uh, problems, you know, and your, and your drug addictions of all kinds, and, and, your, and the, com the compromising of your immune system and the changes in your chem chem phys physical chemistry is affecting you in all the different ways and each has its own treatment, as if they all were in isolation by themselves. That's, the symptom is the, is the object and not, is not the effect of a cause. And so the spiritual warfare is so beautiful in a sense, that it, 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 well, it's not so beautiful in a sense, it's beautifully simple to understand the spiritual warfare. Because if, it had, if you had a lot to do, if the, if the bullies and the tyrants had a lot to do, they wouldn't be able to do it. But, but since it's only one thing, since it's only one thing to take control of a whole country and make you sick in a billion different ways, with various degrees, see? Every effect becomes a cause of the next effect. It's evolutionary or devolutionary. The whole universe is based upon evolution. One thing becomes, thing, one thing becomes something and something makes, it becomes the basis of the next something. You know, the cause and effect. Something now becomes the cause of another thing. And the other thing becomes the cause of the next thing, whole universe comes into existence. That's a positive aspect. But illness is the opposite. It's downward transcension. You're going down. And, and responding to pressure and cruelty, the word is cruelty. Temptation is cruel. It's not just responding to stress. It's responding to evil in a person. And the, 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 the evil in the person may be in a good person. It also may be in a bad person, who is like ISIS, who you can't kill, care, 
um, cure, but you have to kill. That's why you need a sword, why there's, a, why there's wars. So why there's freedom on one side and, and the forces on the other side that hate freedom and hate innocence. That's been the war ever since time began, wasn't it? Adam and Eve. And the first victim was Cain kills Abel. That's how far it quickly it traveled from one to another. Now I'm going to say something now and I'll talk about it later. Is that women are the cause of all the problems. But not their fault. It's not their fault. The fault lies in the male, the man. Because he's born of woman. When you ask, when you read in the scripture, man born of woman, how else could he be born? No, he has to be born again. He has to be born again. He must not think of love as a sensual sexual attraction to a woman. It is natural to be attracted to, in a proper way, a calling to mate, to reproduce, a proper way. There's also a way of eating, where you eat in a proper way and you're satisfied with what is proper or not be satisfied with what is proper, what want more, more and more and more. And the more you get, the more you want, and the fatter you are, and you get sick, and you get diabetes, and all the other different diseases after that. The truth of the matter, you're going to die, if you, if, if you don't die from any one of those things, handled, mishandled by medicine, if you don't die by one of those things all the way up to what I'm about to say, you're going to die from diabetes, heart, which is heart attacks, and all kinds of things associated with, with all kinds of illnesses, associated with diabetes, or you could die from cancer. Those two will kill you in the end. If the others don't kill you first. If you don't get there. Men die earlier than women because they are frustrated in the relationship with the women who need the hell loved out of them. And they don't know that. See, the first woman seduces unconsciously when Eve opens her mouth what comes out of her is not coming through her not coming from her see how I'm saying it now in a different way from a negative it's coming through her her first words were from the spirit of darkness and she then said look I didn't eat I didn't die God says you will die if you eat the fruit, knowledge of fruit of good and evil. And he looked at it and doubted and ate it himself. Now, a whole of the human, human race went back upside down. The dark side, the woman producing the man who goes back to the woman looking for the approval of, of what he is with some, that something's missing. Men born of woman tend to be affected by their mothers more than their fathers. And, and if, how can I say this? And I know I'm not, I'm, I'm, I'm not getting off my point, because it's very important for people to love each other properly and have marriage, and marriage that sticks and produce good children, like, like 19 and still counting. Those are beautiful people. If they, they look what they did and look how much they hated for it. Look how much they hated. What a wonderful job they've done. Beautiful children they've got. Disciplined. One makes a little mistake. He touches. He wants to see what a titty was look, like, look felt like. Excuse the expression. That's all. That was it. All of a sudden, horror from the left. So what you've got here in America, the, the left could be fascist, which is right. The left could be communist, which is left. And the left is growing. And the left is much more subtle than the Hitler kind of right-wing stuff. Ku Klux Klan type of... But it's always in, in the camp of, of uh, the um, Democrats. And we will go later on, if you have questions, why black Americans would be attracted back to that um, plantation.
the money plantation where you're only worth a dollar for your vote. That's all you're worth. See? And there's this war being created in this country by your, by your chief cook and bottle washer. Okay? And so, but because of the brokenness of our country, we got the, we got the government we deserve. Now here, I want to mix things up and you may have something to say about the ladies and gentlemen and the way you get married and all the rest of it. I'm throwing things out so you can see it. So the truth is, when we come back to the idea of spiritual warfare, is it's through the men and women. It's, it's what's coming up through them. And with, with a bad order, God... Uh, Excuse the expression, ladies. Please don't think I'm being rude. But Satan in the woman. Giving birth to a man. And having power over the, over the child. You see. And if the child is a man-child, the father's not there. Because he was also ruined. Because you, the minute the man-child is born, he's corrupted by the presence of his mother. And... It, it can't be helped until the man has the virtue to say, put the fruit down. I want to take over the, the discipline of this child. You please get out of the way. Or the woman should say, if she's decent, go to your father. But she has to have a man to go to. And most men born of women are not men. And, when, and so when they reach maturity, they have the emptiness that Adam had. See, something's missing. But the something missing looks like the, what's pulling on him from the women. Women have two forces. One, they are attractive, which is appropriate. There's a certain kind of attractiveness, but you can turn that off and on by the way you dress. You could be modest and, and drive away the worst kind of men. You, a woman can be literally semi-whole in the sense that they know what right and wrong is. They're, they're, they have an intuition that God gave them, but they've got a problem of, of looking for love from a man which will love the hell out of them rather than embrace the hell in them. And, and usually most men tend to embrace the hell in the woman and the system of grace and propriety and waiting for a period of time before you get married so you learn each other and so the woman comes to the family and becomes joined to the family and everybody lives happily ever after because the man knows to say no to the woman. Am I correct that the woman really needs a man to say no because they can't control their naughtiness? And because the man gives in to that, because he needs something from her, see, which is all called love. When, you, when a man falls in love, he's actually going back to the scene of the crime without the ability to, not understanding what's about to happen to him in every generation. And the dark forces, the, 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 um, the politicians, those who become politicians are usually rise in a free country and understands how to corrupt the schools, the universities, the music. They know how to do it, especially homosexuals. So homosexuals, why I'm saying homosexuals? Because they are basically um, um, tyrants. They're basically tyrants in the sense they will change, they, they are so uncomfortable with the filthy life they live, see, and the way of life, and the way the, the world looks at them. They will spend, because they're more intelligent than the average person, clever, crafty, and rather than to fix themselves and find out what's wrong with them, these kinds of people, see, will multiply in as many ways as they can, multiply not necessarily in the natural way and produce kids, but multiply by, by 
at the extension of perversion. It's infectious. If you get raped or affected as in a child, you'll grow up doing you grow up doing to them as as was done to you. If you were, if your father calls you a homosexual or whatever it is and calls you this, or if your mother has a lot of more power over your father, and there's a war between your mother and your father because because the more your father wants from the woman and the more she gives, the worse he becomes, the more hungry he is, and the more hungry he is, the more she put, he puts pressure on her, and pretty soon there's a war, and in one kind of instant, in one kind of instant, because there's a, in several ways this goes, the woman is the one that looks like the victim, and the father looks like the one that's the bully, but the, but the mother is unconsciously rising to the occasion of his need, and making him either weak or a bully for his sex. Because all he wants is the sex. He doesn't care about the woman. There's no love, but it looks like love. And there again, we got love that isn't love. See, it's a form of slavery. Either the woman to the man or the man to the woman. It depends on who's smarter than the other. See. But if it's the woman that wins, and the woman that, that looks like the victim... And there's a weak father, and this would work better than a really bad, strong father. It works too. But because a weak father, then the mother has the control over the child because the authority is coming up through the generations through her. See? And therefore, he becomes feminine. He becomes a feminine man. There's nothing worse than a feminine man. And, and, and so, therefore, the, the affection, the respect, the loyalty goes to what's in the woman. And therefore, if it's a man, he's part woman and part man. And uh, recently, a, a certain... Uh, uh, what's his name? Bruce. Yeah. See, he is a, he's a mutilated man. That's what he is. He's not a woman. You know what happens to him? He had so much woman in him, he couldn't help himself. He hated his father. He hated his father because he didn't defend him from the mother. Not that the mother's bad, but she carries the genes, the, the spiritual gene, if you like. See, it's a spiritual warfare. It's not physical, but it's mis- metaphysical. And so she, he is in, she is in, infects him. She loves him, and she's the victim. Naturally, the male tends to want to give her affection and will hate the father for being too weak for not protecting against the mother the child every child needs to be saved from the mother and the mother should be prepared to give it the child to the father to discipline because that's the order of discipline in the home and men should be spiritual and in order for uh, to have our country, to recover our country, I have to, to deliver this, this, this sermon, this understanding that, the, that men are feminine. That all young people are feminine and all young men are feminine, all of them, with a few exceptions. But we can't live with a few exceptions. And that's why they have anxiety. That's why they think of love as sex and abusing women and abusing women it, it, uh, having no other way not having, not having found what a man is that all they can do is give themselves to a weak man thinking, you, thinking in her mind she can do good and if she loves him and gives him lots of sex he'll become a man no he only becomes a, a, a lusty bastard pardon the expression the more you give him the more he wants and then all of a sudden she, she can't give anymore she feels dirty and then she gets angry. And then he may get weak or run away to another woman. But the woman's influence is still there. Paradise lost is reproducing itself. And so the whole idea is to destroy marriage and make sex love. It's always been that way. But if you want to take the but America wasn't like that. We had families and black people had families. And black, people, black Americans had good families. Look what happened to them. 
Look what happened to them. How did they get to be that way? How did most of them, not all, we have wonderful examples. I have a surgeon, who, a brain surgeon, who is a beautiful person. You've got a, a black American in the, civil, in, in the Supreme Court. What a beautiful pe pe person he is. But they're all hated by those who are products of what I just said, who are permanent products of it. They're haters. Of it. So that when it comes to that, what's that name of that man again? Ben Carson. Huh? No, I want to know the, the, the name of the person who is now a woman. Now a woman. Bruce. Bruce. Okay, I, I forget because it's not too much. Not important to me. I live for my. I don't have a good memory for things, people, places, and things. I come just only in principle. It applies to everybody. He's a mutilated man. That's all it is. So, but what it is, he hated his mother. See. He, he, who was cruel to him, and whose identity she has, because he wasn't protected from his, he wasn't protected by virtue of his father. You leave that kid alone. It's my business to to teach him and bring him up in a proper way. There's got to be that order. I can't just give uh, give forth and communicate to everybody that they have to do this. They have men have to learn to be still and let the let the light catch up to them and make them realize that their sexual impulse is more lust than love. A, a, hus, hus, a animal quality, something that's missing because he's born of woman. And they're born of woman, but the first man, woman was born of man. Do you get that? She wasn't really born, but she was the extension of him. That's the idea. And so the, the beauty of a woman is the one that serves a good man. And when the children see the woman serving a good man, the children love the mother who loved the father who loved God. What you got it backwards now? It's upside down. The father is in the home. The mother's in charge, and the, the government is in charge of the mother. Now you own the country. That's why you need to be moral. That's why we have to know what moral is. And today, moral is... You look at this... this this, the, the 19 kids and counting, I keep remember forgetting their name, forgive me. Douglas. Yeah, I know, it's Douglas, thank you, I'll write it down, so when I talk about it on Monday, <laughs> I'll write it down. But it won't stay in my head. It's just the fact I see a beautiful woman loving her decent husband and resolving the problem, the only one simple problem they've taken care of, and look at what happened. It was a wonderful movie. I understand. I've never seen it, seen the, the uh, series. But when I saw them talking, I said, if America was only half as good as that, we would save our country. So now I'm going to come back to Bruce, right? Did I get the right word? Okay, so. Okay. Yeah. No, just. <laughs> who? He changed his name. He's not Caitlin. Oh, no, never mind. We're talking about Bruce. <laughs> it's, it's mutilated Bruce. Okay. So what is happening in, in psychologically, he has he is, had a mother, and he took the identity from his mother. And he, and he struggled to keep his masculinity. See? As he felt uncomfortable with that. And he resented his mother, who tends to possess him. And she had control over the family, and over his masculinity, and over the masculinity of the father, too. And so, because women ca have control of a man, whether he's a weak one or a, bo a wicked one. She, she has created the wicked one and the, and the wimpy, both. She could never be happy with either one. And she can't help but, but play the role to survive. To give him sex when he shush he shouldn't, when she feels dirty, etc., etc. But in this case, she felt the hate of, men, of, of the mother for the father. So he became a hater of men. But the point is, he hated himself. And he, 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 he could see how clever his mother was, how cunning. See? But he, but he felt. That, the conflict of his identity that is getting from his mother, because the more he hated his mother, the more the identity got inside him. You know when you struggle with yourself, you get worse. 
You know when you hate the person that hurts you, you get worse. And so if your mother dies, or the people you hate that got you on that road, if that person dies, and you live on a desert island, the person will still be in your head, taunting you, and you resenting it. You're resenting it, you don't want it, it's giving you anxiety. You're struggling with that which has changed your identity. You know you're a man, but all of a sudden you're more like a woman because the more you hate the woman in yourself, the more the woman in yourself becomes you. And it convinces you that you're a woman in a man's body. So you have to fight it some way. You have to conquer the anxiety of being... So he, now he becomes a great athlete. And everybody loves him the way he is, but he doesn't love the way... He, he hasn't solved the problem. People have been worshipping what they didn't know was in him. That's what killed Robin Williams. The support. What, and, and him receiving tremendous amounts of love and support for what's wrong with him that's what it was. When anybody loves you the way you are, you get worse. Isn't that every human? Huh? Is that not every human? It's not every human, sure. Because you just, everything that you just spoke is myself. Of course. But let me finish and we'll talk. Are you getting the point so far? So I'm taking this one point now and showing how the whole country is ruined from this. And we should not be aghast or be excited about seeing this beautiful woman turned uh, from, changed from a man. This is not good. This is dangerous for, for this to be an accomplishment. Where, but what he's doing, he couldn't overcome. In other words, he was a great athlete because he had this anxiety to make it right to not be a woman but to be a man. And the more he tried, the worse he becomes. The more he becomes, the harder he tries to be a person, a man. And the more he, be the more he becomes a woman, because he's feeding the woman inside him, struggling with, hating it. And so what did he do? Eventually, he has to do something. And, and in this case, he changes into a woman, what looks like a woman. But you see what he's doing, he's going to do what he's going to do as a man. I, let me just say something here and then I'll finish the point. A man who has the guile of a woman is much smarter than any woman because he has a bigger brain to be more smarter with. And I don't mean to be rude. See, brain doesn't affect character. Einstein's brain was smaller than yet. Everybody said he had a bigger brain, and when they, he gave his brain to, to the system, and they cut it open, it was smaller than all the others. See, so we're not. I'm not um, insulting anybody. I hope I'm just making a point. And so everybody's loving him this way. See, everybody thinks, "Wow!" See, now he's more important than ever. He's, this is a very dangerous situation for this man. It's a situation, it is, the wonder of it makes it acceptable. The, the, he is more beautiful than most women. And why, that's how he's going to overcome his mother, by being a better mother, a better woman. He's going to overcome them and be better than them. That's how he's finishing his life. Which isn't a life. It's crazy. <coughs> now I come back to homosexuals. They will rather change the world. They have the money because they don't have children. So, and the homosexual, homosexual is far more intelligent than the average person. I don't know why that is. I guess survival, right? Something like that. And so they have more money than we do. And even though they're in a minority, they have more money. And they've learned to, they've learned to deal, with, deal with the media and, and infiltrate into the schools. And they have help. 
And guess who they're helping? Who's helping them to do this? This could never have happened. The it's Democrats. The Democrats, which are which are, um, I'll f find the word for it. Liberal. No, yeah, not yet. Democrats, which are tainted with communism, Marxism, see, who are using them and in helping them with money to make this popular, to make homosexual popular, see, until you vote for it, like fools, see. If you have enough advertising money, for, you get power, and you can make power people believe anything, because they're that gullible. You, what you read in the paper about Roy Masters never was true. See, never. If you own the media, what you have to do is own the media. That's what they did. The communists come over here, Marxists, and they buy the newspapers. They, they infect the schools systems. Well, how do they affect the school system? Because the more intellectual you are, the more knowledge you have, the less common sense you have. So you are devoid of spirit. Therefore, you can fill the spirit, the, the absence of spirit of good with the spirit of evil and a particular kind of political concept and be progress. So therefore, you could, if, you make, if you are able to, get to the, go to the schools and put one person in there who's studying psychology, those, those 20 or 30 or 40 students will become exactly a copy of what he was taught, they were taught. Just like you go to school. So really, if to, to, and I would just let me go right back to the beginning. If you could learn not to be part of culture, not to take your identity from culture, not to see the, the culture as, even if it's a good culture, with all the laws, the constitution, that's fine, you've got a good culture because you're being protected for the free speech but not to be caught up with the cultures of whatever it is, gangs, religions, cults, whatever. You don't want to belong to anything. You only want to belong to God. And to, so that from the very beginning, the day you were born, you already had him in the, in the child. You already have him there, except the parents are culturally affected and have not lost all sight of truth, even though you can go to many countries and find people who see things exactly as I do, and, but are surrounded by people who see otherwise, like what's happening in America. So what, in, in other words, half of the American people in a manner of speaking, I think it's about 45% who still like Mrs. Clinton. They've got to be insane. You've got to, have, you've got to be mentally disturbed. You have to be programmed by your, by, your, by your mainstream media. Or whatever. Programmed in school not to think for yourself. To have stuff shoved down in your throat. In school and shove the religion down your throat. Whether you are a rebel or a conformist, you're no good anyway. You, rebel and conformist are both wrong. There's something in the middle missing. And that's the spirit of you. Do you understand that? So you see what's happening now. You have, over the years, they have been slowly gaining ground, creating more psychiatrists, more doctors, but are less and less effective. Always be, as you take over all these institutions, you make the quality of the de education worse and worse and worse. Right now, you can hardly go to a hospital with a doctor that's any good. Let me tell you something. Let me just play around with ideas. This happened to me. Um, about f four weeks ago, five weeks ago, I had to go to the hospital. It was like my heart was, I was going to have a heart attack. Okay. So we went to an emergency room, and that's, that's, that's Grants Pass um, Hospital. They put me straight up in the room, 
and decided what was wrong with me. Gave me a CAT scan. They didn't see any cats, I know. <laughs> they decided I had a little uh, a, a, a gallstone in the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the kidney stone. That wasn't really the problem I went for. They left me with the problem I went for. I had to get out of there quickly. But they t- tied me to the bed. They put an alarm on. I got my cell phone. I got out of there. Called my sons again. And then we went to the other hospital, and they tra- they treated me even worse. Yeah, uh, they get. I I used to be a diabetic. I'm not anymore. I just almost lost my foot. I lost my foot, uh, toe, and if I was a diabetic, I would have to have my leg cut off. But it's still there. See, so lots of blood still there. So I'm not a diabetic anymore. I just ha- I just can't have sugar. I said, don't, I, I couldn't eat anything. And what I'm saying here is, I'm going to add a little piece here and then continue. If you have a heart attack, this is a, this is a, a fact. I may, I may get the numbers correct, incorrectly, but this is the fact. If you have a heart, heart attack at home and you don't go to the hospital, you've got 10 times ch- chance of living than you go to the hospital. Because they, there's lots of reasons why you have a heart attack. I wasn't having a heart attack. I'll tell you what, it's, what, what it was, and it's a little embarrassing. It was gas. It couldn't come up, and it couldn't go out. Now you see I'm an ordinary human being. <laughs> Are you okay with that now? <laughs> see, I'm just Roy. Okay, so, but what it was... It pushed against the heart. And it created a heart attack. My heart is perfect. By the time you get to the hospital, they will do so many things that are wrong, not knowing that simple thing. So all I'm doing now, for some reasons, over the years I've been in the hospital so many times, and recovered and recovered and recovered, and was mutilated and recovered. So I learned another thing. I I can share it with you. The chances are, if you have what appears to be heart problems, it's only gas. Because when you're, emo- I'm not an emotional person, but for some reason I have too much acid in my stomach. And therefore, it produces gas. See, and, and then it builds and builds, and it has nowhere to go. And my intestines have been, have been uh, are devoid of their natural uh, flora over the years for the antibiotics. But otherwise, when you look through, when, I, when I, you take the CAT scan, whatever you call it, uh, well, it's a cat, not a CAT scan, but whatever it is, you see nothing wrong with me anywhere. Nothing. I'm 87, nothing. I don't know what to do. They, they put me under sedation, they put me, uh, put me sleep three times, and look, look, in, look, look, at, look at everything from above and below. Nothing. Nothing. I think I was, but what it was, it was just the gas. And so all I need to do, all I need now, is however that is, because my, my machinery doesn't work as perfect as it should, with the proper flora in your stomach. And, and as a result, as a, some reason, I have a little bit more, I don't feel any bur- heartburn. I don't feel any of that. It's nothing like, I don't even know I have extra acid in my stomach. All I need is to carry the over the counter. What's it called? Gas. That's right. And just take one in the morning, uh, as a matter of course, or a proper time during the day. That goes away. The heart probably goes away to one hundred five over sixty. You can't beat it at six at eight seven. But the, but the treatments they gave me. So to add to my troubles, I say, I, I, I can't eat yet. I've been, I haven't eaten for 14 days. Please don't give me, just give me jello without uh, sugar. But they had me in that hospital, they know I was a diabetic and not to have sugar. What they sent me up was a lot of jello with a lot of sugar in it and threw me into it into a diabetic shock that 
kill me, would have killed me if a nurse didn't hear me say when I was dying, it's the jello. And my son Mark says, is there any, is there any insulin? She says, yes. Is how long did it take to get it? Three hours. You know where it is? Yes. And she got it right away. And it was okay. There was an angel there for me. I always survive somehow. I beg you to understand that what I'm saying isn't just to save your country, but so that you will not be mutilated as I have been. But I've learned something. So you just learned something about heart attack. What they do to, to check your heart is to make it worse. To, you're not treating the real symptom. You are starting to treat the heart that doesn't need to be treated. So it is now official. You're ten times as li li liable to survive if you don't go to hospital. Of course, there's times you should. But we don't know which one's which. But if, you, if I give you that information, and you take a, a, a over-the-counter gas X, you might, it, 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 do you see that? Just knowing that, that's like an aspirin. But, but that, I don't think, know a doctor that understands that. Because when the doctor finally came three hours later, and my blood pressure was normal, he thought I was a fake. So now, I've said a lot of things that have, have every one of you understood all the mechanical uh, ideas and thoughts and how you, the mind plays games with you. I'll give you one more. How you can be made sick and die from just suggestion. Mother or father says, you're just a no good SOB. You'll never be anything. It ha happens a lot. And when you're angry, you say things like that. And it comes out of your mouth and you forget it. But, it's, but it, it, it affects the child. And immediately, the shock of the spoken word of something bigger and stronger than itself becomes what it is. And he tries hard to be a better person. Just like Bruce. And in this case, he tries hard and fails. Or, in this case, he tries hard and succeeds. But after a while, the success, like, um, what's the fellow, William? Robin. Robin. Robin, yes. He died from compensating. Compensating. Yeah, and Bruce too. Mm -hmm. See, compensating, compensating, compensating. And the more you compensate, the more com anxiety you get. The more anxiety you get, you think you haven't, tried, it don't, you haven't done enough. It was wonderful trying. It's wonderful looking forward to it. But looking forward to it is looking away from where you, go, where you should be going. And creating a bigger anxiety, which is terrible. <clears throat> you need drugs. You need more pros. You need people to love you. See. And so you're losing, losing is sooner or later it's going to happen. And so the idea, as you start to get sick and you're laying in the bed in the hospital and you're dying of cancer or a, a malady, you don't know what it is. They don't know what it is. And, and you're dying. And this is where you think, my father and my mother said I was no damn good. And this is the proof. It is the proof, isn't it? It's the proof that he's no damn good. How are you going to overcome that? How is he going to overcome the proof? How is the doctor over when there's really nothing wrong with him? There never was. It became wrong because he struggled against the concept that was put in his mind that he's no damn good and he's going to die. Why would he want to do that? No, he, he tries then to be a better person. He hates his father. All that's wrong is he's hating his father and judging him and then feeling guilty. Judgment is mine, saith the Lord. You see, the word judgment is really playing God. That's what judgment is. 
And that's what forgiveness is. Yes, only God forgives. Why do you think they crucified Jesus? You, a mere man, can, can, can forgive somebody? They knew that, the scribes and Pharisees. But he didn't say, he's not, my father within me, he doth it. You don't call me good, only God is good. He was the messenger. Now, I come back to me. And then we'll take questions if you want, and discussion. I started my discussion with you, is said to look at Roy, and you know I, I, I horseplay with you, don't I? I, I, I have a, a fun attitude. I'm not your average preacher. I'm not. This is a religion here, but it's transcendent to religion. I don't want you dependent on me. You can like me, but you, and, and, and you can like me and love me, but there can't be a feeling between us. Because love is not a feeling. Love is a feeling only to an, a drug addict, a food addict, and looking forward to more feeling because more feeling means more, you feel more alive, but actually you're more dead. I didn't, ex no, you, did you like my lecture here this morning? Yeah? I didn't, I didn't ever, I never wrote a word for it. I never knew what I was gonna say to you. Isn't that better to live like that? Don't you appreciate that what I'm saying is real, but I want to caution you I'm just an ordinary man. And as Jesus was, he's an extraordinary, only that thing that he, he was sired by a father in heaven. He, he didn't have a the father that you had. See, most fathers are no damn good. And there's such nice women out there, they're abused, see, by men who are affected by women and serviced by women, but at the same time enslaved by them unwittingly, and try harder to love her so she gives him sex and gives him a good feeling. That's all he cares about. He doesn't care about the kids. And the kids can see he cares about mother for some weird reason, even, even if they don't know what it is. <laughs> see? And sooner or later they discover what it is. And figure, well, that's it. I'm gonna do it too. So, there it is. Questions? What's the flip side? <laughs> <laughs> what was that? I was just being jokeful. I think the part, <clears throat> everything that you spoke of, the truth is there's a devil that tempts no matter what it is. Um, because every scenario that you just gave is my life. The thought, are you talking about the thought, the dialogue in your head? Everything that, yes. that the you spoke that of, the yeah. Bruce Jenner, whatever, the wife, even the man, every, everything that you spoke of has lived inside of me at some point. A situation has occurred in my life that has fit everything you've just said. So the truth that, the flip side that I'm saying, because my whole 35 years I've always said to you, tell me I'm going to be okay, tell me I'm going to be okay. And but you're not. They, they, no, you, I if, was you are, okay. if they said it, you, they'd be lying to you. Right. Well, and now I've known you. F my son will be 35 years old this year. I came here when he was two weeks old. And it was just within the last few months. <clears throat> and I came here one day, and the freedom was understanding that it was not my sin. And That's I did right. not do. All of the wicked, no, horrible you did things it. It was done through you. That I've done in my life yes. that have kept me hostage beyond. The guilt has drove me. I've drank, I've smoked, I've done stupid things. And now there's still a struggle. I, I don't know every moment I have to wake up and there's still voices in my head. But that knowing, and, and I do believe, and I do believe in God. And I don't know that I really did believe in God. And, and I believe... But actually, you don't know what belief is. Uh, maybe be I don't. Belief, yeah, I, I don't think you can describe what belief is. 
it, it descends upon you without explanation. Okay. And, and the result of that, but the evidence of it is you don't know how to be angry anymore, or you're losing the anger you had losing. without your trying. It's melting something. It's and turning it back into vapor. When you get upset, you give off vapor to the other person. And something comes from the other person inside you, an identity. And you have to keep on giving you something of your life. And that's a false love of, your, of the bully. See, And the false love of the bully is the life of death. It's the reassurance that wrong is right in you. So, you're, so the, the dope pusher, to make it simple, rises to the occasion of the descending uh, drug addict. Descending. And he descends. And, it, and the anxiety of descending is an, ang is an anxiety like stretching a rubber band and, and scratching your fingers on a, on a, on a, on a scoop, chalkboard. chalkboard. Okay, thank you. And so it's terrible pain. Agonizing pain, unbelievable. But the point is, you don't know what it is. And the person doesn't know because he's drinking, he's smoking, he's drugging. There's all he knows how to get some relief. It's the only life he knows. But there's another life trying to follow you all the way to the grave, and that's what's painful. But it, but the dark side makes you think the painful is, is the evil, and the, what rises to the occasion is the is the is salvation. It's salvation from salvation. Now, but the dark side in, in the political world you're living in, if you look, now I'm going to be a little bit political, just a little bit, because this is a church. But if you remember that time, and I forget the name of the city, You'll know it right away in a minute. Um, if you remember a video that showed judgment on a policeman, mob just mob rule judgment in the um, Democratic Party on uh, the Senate, and they all stood up. Nearly all of them stood up and says, "Don't shoot." long before justice could be adjudicated. Right. Those people, those people have been elected by those pe kinds of people who have been broken to the degree that they've elected something rotten to love them. You see, there's, in other words, when you are broken, you tend to love, look for love in all the wrong places especially the kind of person that hurt you, that put themselves in you. But there's plenty of those people in the world, see, who could play that role and rise to the occasion and love you for what you are, whether it's a drug pusher or whether it's a senator. And, he, and the drug he gives you is the sense that you are good and everybody else is bad, so therefore you start to hate good yourself. And there can come a point where you hate good and, lo and love the, 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 the people that, the kind of person that made you, that continues making, remaking you and remaking you. And then on top of that, having pity on you and giving you a, a cell phone. And give you a place where you can multiply and become a whore with lots of kids. And reward you for that. See? And so, the, but you see now, those kind of people will elect those kind of people. And continue until there's more of them in the Senate and in the government than there is of us. And pretty soon we become slaves. And you can overlook the Constitution because there are not enough people to stand up. And the people who are still good can't stand up because they don't know how. How to deal with the pressures because they've got their own pressures. And, and own angers. And own guilts. But the good people need to be, to be armed by what I'm talking about. I know how to, if I had a, a big enough bully pulpit in the, in the radio business. If I had a big enough and had enough money, and you know how, about how easy to get money from other countries that are tyrannical, ruled by tyrants, okay, and murderers, and so therefore, they, and they want to conquer the world, they will fund those people 
the Clintons are getting funds from that. And therefore, lots of, lots of advertising and, and, and media cover. And media cover all too willingly to do it. And so coming, so when it comes back to the homosexuals now, the homosexuals, the way they go about doing that. In Hitler, in Hitler, Germany, I wish I could remember the name, it's on the tip of my tongue. Ernst something or other. Brom. Brom, yes. Yeah. Okay. He ran the Broughton Church, and he helped Hitler, and he was homosexual. And all his buddies were homosexual. But when he realized, when Hitler realized that they, were, that they wanted power too, see, then he's, he got hit the, 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 the brown shirts had a big army, basically a big following. So he, what he did was he, he, he waited one evening and surrounded where, they were, where the leaders were, and they killed all of them, all the homosexuals. The homosexuals did their work, and but their work, their work was the same kind of the need for power like Hitler wanted, and it just couldn't be two of them. So therefore, the the army of the brown shirts then became the army of Adolf Hitler, which doubled his army, his work, his army. There was two factions. So again, all the, all those people who were in the media against him, they got murdered too. And and, and when the, when America becomes that way, the people that helped to elect the media that helped to elect Obama, when you when he pulls the mask off, they'll all be executed. Guarantee you, because. They're intellectuals and they realize what they've done. And when they realize what they've done, they become dangerous. And he knows that. And to make sure, he'll kill them. Well, he'll have gone beyond the Constitution if there's, if there's a civil war or martial law. That there are no more elections. In the next, by June the 30th, there's this thing with Iran going on. Oh, three months ago, Obama gave $12 billion to Iran. And it, it wasn't our money. It was money that was kept, kept for 30 or 40 years because of their behavior. There's another $140 billion waiting. It, will, it cost $10 billion a year for the, the Iranian army. So he got $12 billion handed to him by your president. There is, now they got, but we still have $140 billion of his money. And so now what's he gonna do with this? If at the 30th of this month, what is he gonna do with that money? It's all over. It's all over. That's enough for five years. That's enough for five years of war. Five years of war for them, and Israel has nothing. It has very little, and the target is Israel. And you have a president who has two sides of him. One loves one loves the Muslim side and that cause, and his other father, you know, was a communist. So he's actually help, he is divided and helping both of those to fulfill his father's dreams. And you all see this, and what we need to do is to have a, a cry that says we want to look at his birth certificate. Because the only reason why he got in is because the media covered it all up. So what we need to do is a, a cry quickly. We want to see that birth certificate and get the media out of the way. But I don't know, but I know how to start all this. I know how to stop it in its tracks by helping Americans not to be intimidated into submission or get upset and take it out on his wife. Who takes it out on the children? 
and then back arms broken, and he deal, and the, and this administration is very good with broken people. They, the more they help them, the more they break them. The cure is worse than the disease. Now I'm 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 open now to discussion on your own problems. I just thought I'd share this as a um, a warning to America if it, if this message could get out. Top of this, it's only limited to a small number of people. And if, if those of you listening to me on radio, who've been listening to me for years and just enjoyed the radio programs, but have not supported me but got benefit, or even if you didn't get benefit, you like what I'm saying, because if I can get the message out to, to the drug addicts and the pot smokers and all the rest of it, we could save this country. But we're not going to save this country if we are the way we are. We're finished. It's all over. I got my preparations ready to go. I don't want to leave my soldiers. I don't want to leave, I don't want to leave my veterans. But what can I do? See, all I can do is be arrested. I'm okay with that now. But after a while, it's no good. I'm dead too. Okay? He who lives to run away learns to fight another day. <laughs> That's it. I do the best I can. Okay. And so now it's important for you to be gracious. And one of the ways you can do it, we can use this beautiful ranch. A certain gentleman has been hacking it away and making it magnificent. And, and Tim and his wife uh, have made the, you know, kept the grounds up. And who could ask for anything better than that? This is a good beginning to bring your people over here and make an appointment for dinner. And we can start with a few. Instead of going to a restaurant, drive a few miles out, especially in the summer. And we'll start that way. And we'll do some weddings and things like that. Things, that, things will begin to function. But we, but, but we need you to be a living example of these things and not proselytize. Meaning, you know, you've got to listen to Roy Masters. You've got to be somehow, you have to be, be what you're talking about. Be yourself. And they say, well, how, how did you know all these things? Well, I learned it a long time ago. Well, who did you learn that from? Well, if you want to, I'll take you to see him if you want to. We have a little talk every now and then. And like, yeah, I like that. We can have lunch or something. There's something we can do that will make this place attractive. Otherwise, nobody comes. You don't even come. <laughs> this is a beautiful place to have picnics and to go boating. Questions? Any question? Yes. <clears throat> I'm, I just all right have, with, I'm uh, all right with you. Okay. Um, I'm a little bit silly asking this, but my granddaughter no, is silly. three. Okay, go ahead. And I was a, a very angry person, so I've put that into my daughter, who has now put it into her daughter, who's now coming back to me because I babysit her five days a week. It slowed down a little bit. Okay. Because my um, brain is a little slow. Okay. I have a daughter that I obviously put my spirit into. Yes. Who has a daughter who now the spirit's gone into the yes. three year old. Yes, yes. Now the three year old is in my care five days a week. I babysit her. Yes. And she's starting to scream. And when you took some of that ugliness out of me, to what? You took some ugliness out of me, um, the, that exorcism that I had. Mm hmm. I feel like that's a little bit in the baby now, and I'm I when she acts out, I'm not being um, I don't know how to be. I will tell you. Okay. Now, it's very simple. When she starts to scream, how old is she? Three. You sit next to her, and she doesn't know what she wants, does she? No. Okay. So you, if she doesn't know what she wants and you don't know what she wants. 
then you, you don't want to struggle trying to figure out what to give her. Mm -hmm. You go crazy. Right. See? So even the dark side is in the child. Right. It's driving you crazy. Yes. The whole idea is let the child, let the child scream. Let him run, just let it run around and wait. Make sure it doesn't get into the swimming pool or run out of your sight. Gently close the door, wherever it is, and just wait, sit quietly. It may go for hours and hours and hours. And all of a sudden, something magical will happen, I guarantee you. Or your money back. <laughs> all of a sudden, he'll say, Grandma, I don't know what got into me. That's all right, dear. That's all that's necessary. And so, <clears throat> when you don't, when I... I want to make sure that I'm not, You're not accommodated in it. I don't no, want to accommodate that no, you part see, of her. In my explanation, there is no accommodation. Okay. So did I just can't it? talk at all? It? Did you hear it? You okay. sit patiently and listen to the screams and not identify them with, by feeling sorry for the kid or feeling like you've got to do something, the scream yes. is helping you, it's crying out to you. It's crying out to you, but you don't know what to do, so why don't you be honest about it? I don't know what to do. Right. Okay. Then you, but inadvertently, without understanding, you are doing the right thing. I told you, you don't know what right is. Right. Sometimes it's nothing. <laughs> something that absolutely nothing. But you represent something, because you can't. The child is wanting you to be upset and give you give something to him or her that will destroy the child. Mm -hmm. Whatever you give and whatever you, you, you withhold, you're not withholding anything, you're not withholding love because you don't know what love is. You don't possess love. So if you, since, since you don't know what to do, okay. realize, I don't know what to do. I see the child, I'm, I'm now just putting words to it, which really doesn't need words. But you see, I do not know what I'm doing sitting here. <laughs> do you see the difference? I don't know what I'm doing sitting here. I don't know what I was going to say sitting here. I don't know the outcome on anybody sitting in this room. I'm okay with it. You either like it and live or don't like it and die. So uh, I, I get rid of you. If you die, I get rid of you. If you live, I got a friend. <laughs> it's simple. I told my wife the same thing. That's what love is. And she understands it now. It took her 63 years to understand that. It was so... so huh? 63 years is a lifetime. It is, but it, took, but it took you that long to begin to see it. Well, we could be like our great-grandson. No, 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 you don't want to be talking. You have no microphone. You have no microphone, so please not now. If you want, no, 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 your loud mouth doesn't work. Oh, she gave me one. That's the idea. He says, Mom, you need to go inside and do the hand meditation. No, no. <laughs> he always tells oh, her Oh, she's that. talking about the five-year-old son. That grand, great-grandson. Yeah. Great-grandson. Right. Thank you. And uh, we have a daughter that kind of broke, the granddaughter, broken in David's family, in a divorce. And she's alone with the child. But the boy is so strong. And she gave him a meditation to, to, when she was about two or three. He's loved it ever since. Yeah. And whenever he, she is out of sorts, whenever she is irritable, he'll say, Mom, get over it. <coughs> Do your hand meditation. Yeah. He has already got it. Yeah. He'll grow up to be strong. He's focused. Uh, he's lovable. He's conscientious. He's can focus for six or seven hours on a project. I just, well, I don't, I, he puts things together I couldn't do. See, so, the children have wonderful opportunities if we can get rid of the wickedness in all of us. Because even, the, even you nice people have wicked, had wickedness in you one time. And, and you knew it. And you knew it to come here. And slowly but surely, some get it quick and don't see them anymore. And every now and then I get a donation from some of them. And others, otherwise they forget me and, oh, is he still alive? You know, that kind of stuff. 
Yes, I am. <laughs> Are you still alive? That's what I'm question. You could be the living dead. People can be the living dead. Most of us are the living dead. I was. See? And so the average person in the street is the living dead. They do not know they're alive. They're aware like a dog. They have no idea they're hypnotized. That's right. They have no idea. Exactly. They're in a hypnotic state, so they think what they, who they are is them. Because they think. Oh, yes. I didn't see. I thought the voice yeah. was coming from the back. Yeah, that's all. It, it, it's interesting. Um, my daughter calls me up, and she's having marital problems, and I've been talking to her about this. I said, every marriage has to go through a divorce, not a legal divorce, but a divorce of selfishness. And she says, I've, I've lost all feelings for my husband. I said, that's a blessing in disguise. Yes. I said, the feelings was the glue that's screwing up everything. Right on the money. I said, now, I said, you're not going to be reacting to it. But me. has she lost the feelings for her husband and, and transferred the feelings to somebody else? That's the question. See, that's well, happening. it's coming down to a resentment issue because she's losing energy, and I know there's a transferring going on, at least I think there is, where she's... I've been trying to help her with your materials to stay in the objective state of mind. And um, like most of us, she reacts to certain things. Her buttons get pushed. And he's, um, like you've, you've written, most relationships are going to have a bully and a coward. And they're going, they're going through that transition now where um, he's very bright, very manipulative, very verbal and he can beat her up. And I'm trying to tell her the action of no action, instead of always opposing it, realizing right. that in his, where he's at currently, there's no starting point for him to realize what he's doing. So she's frustrated because there's no communication. And I said, in most relationships, there isn't any communication. All there is is noise, there's just talk nothing meaningful is taking place. I said, if you can see that, you're not going to be frustrated. Is that, am I making any sense? You know, that's what I talked to her about. Yes. So, what he's, if I may amplify that. If you sure, mind. of course. You see, what he's saying is what we can condense f from the beginning of what I said. Is, is that Jesus only had one problem to solve, faith whatever faith is, we could have another talk on that. But um, it's different from trust. And, and if you have faith, the evidence of it is that you're untouchable. In other words, everything that uh, torture, anything, everything that comes against you, there's no flinching, there's no fear, there's no guilt. There's no anger. And so, if you notice that bullies scream and yell at you to see how you react, if you react with fear and, and you give in, appease, if you react with anger and then become an adversary, you're dead if you're weaker than the person. If you're stronger than the person, he gets it and he's, he's finished. They're making each other worse. The king is dead, long live the king. You see what I'm saying? The devil is dead, long live the devil, so to speak. Each, each one tries to overcome the other. One by giving in and hoping that by giving in that the power of your love will save him. That's egotistical. All you do is emboldening the next round of brutality, see. And so, you understand that the only thing America has to understand is to drop all their angers in a special way, but the churches do not have that to give them. The churches, the psychiatrists, and the doctors are all dependent upon your problems 
are in the way, generally speaking. The number of doctors would disappear to 10% of what it is now. And there will be a need, as you grow older, to get into trouble, to break your leg, and to have the measles and things like that. Whatever it is, you don't need as many doctors and psychiatrists. They'll all be out of business, all the bad ones and the good ones will come back. See, at the same time, if you could not be intimidated by, if you could just stand up, like I do. I do it on the radio, whatever happens to me, happens to me. If I die, I die. If I go to jail, I go to jail. I'm not afraid. I don't like it. I don't hate it. I was in jail one time. Did you know that? Many of you don't know the story? But most of you know it, don't you? So I won't share it with you then. Yeah. So anyway, when I, I went there for... My crime was practicing medicine without license. They just sent a guy in and says, I, I can't stop drinking. I took him in. I said, you've got to sign something first. I'm not practicing medicine. He didn't. My secretary did. He said, I'll pay you it tomorrow. She said, yeah, okay. And so that became a court case. I went to jail for 30 days. I mesmerized the entire jail. <laughs> They're all afraid of me. And then they go, but the guys put me into a tank with them. And, and the headline in the local newspaper was Hypnotist Practices Spells in Cells. <laughs> but you see, your, your faith is so strong that your flesh, it, you reach the point through faith that your flesh isn't as important no matter where it's at because of the spirit and everybody in this room here has an identity crisis because they don't have faith they have the, the wrong identity that, that needs the body you, you, i know my body is a sacrificable yeah but that but that's a, all a faith issue that's what it really comes down to yesterday I, I was sitting out in my patio and i could see the restlessness in me and i, I just got very quiet and i was looking at all the things that I've always used to compensate for being happy. And they were all big fat lies. And now I'm very, very old, and I'm, I'm facing that the body's gonna go one way or another. Yes. And I, I look, all my misplaced faith, all of my life, this thing, that thing, and everything. And it's so funny, I'm financially in a position to just about do anything I want but all the things have passed me by now, all right? I can't buy a convertible and get the old kick like I was 20 years old. There you go. I can't eat certain food. That's me. Yeah. That's me. Exactly. But, but, by the there's, way, there's by true the way, freedom. I've got a couple of cars. I love, I've got too many, I've got five. Yeah. If you want one, come and see me. Yeah. They're all good. <laughs> but, but you see, and what I'm sharing with you, if you can get that quiet, and I wish it lasted longer, there's, that's the only place where you have true freedom. Yeah. Okay, in that objective state of mind. When you look at everything in the world and what a big fat lie it is, even though all the personal relationships, okay, they will never ever fulfill you. No. I don't care if it's your wife, your kid, or whatever. No, that's The sooner right. you realize that, the freer you're going to be. Yes. Thank you. Wow. Thank are we, you. Are we, you and I are going to be friends in heaven. It, it, the lady. No, it's for me personally the most discouraging part is not the continuous commitment to that truth. I deviate. And I should, uh oh, I, should, I take it back. Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it, it's just like, uh, it's funny, my name's Jenner too. And I'll bet you anything that if Bruce continues what he's going to do, he's going to commit suicide. Yeah. Yes. Okay, because he, when he becomes that woman, all right, he will realize like I've realized that everything's a big fat lie. Well, he, he won't be able to leak. 
Yes, yes. <laughs> well, yes. Too. He'll die by his own hand. <laughs> yeah. And all of us are going to die by our own hand until we realize certain things. Yeah. There's a million jillion ways to commit suicide. I can do it with brownies. Just eat enough of the damn exactly. things and you're dead. I, n I know a certain uh, a talk show host um, that uh, used to work for the foundation, a very, very famous one. And in order to satisfy his wife, who was unhappy, we gave him donuts, that, certain donuts that she loved. And she gave him more and more donuts, more and more, and she died from it. Just donuts. Because he, 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 he didn't know how to love her. He, didn't know how to, he tried to appease her in every way. So he could have sex. And then she would have terrible pain with the sex. And he'd give her more donuts. The, 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 the trouble, when I was very young, I was a sexaholic. And I, and I, I started to realize what a perversion it, it becomes because it, you, you have to keep getting weirder and weirder and weirder to get that fix. Exactly right. Okay. And, now, you know, and it became crystal clear to me why people violate young children. It's got, you've got to go after that innocence. That's correct. You have to go after that innocence whether you like it or not. You You're have not no control. control of your life. This whole country is not in control of itself. There are a few, and even the people who are well known, like O'Reilly and others, they got secret lives. I guarantee you. The, 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 the power, the money has gone to their head. I guarantee you, even though I don't know it's true, that nearly all of them have secret lives. And the reason why, the, 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 the excuse me, putting it this way, you could t let me just pick up f for where you left off for a few, few minutes, is that the reason why the, the, the Republicans don't speak up and don't really say what needs to be said is because the left has lots of lots on them, right? They're all corrupt. Both sides are corrupt. And so we need to get rid of both those freaking people and have that nice doctor, the black doctor, who's a, who's a really nice, sensible person. And but especially because he's black. Especially because he's black. See, it, was it would be beautiful if he could get to be a president. Yeah, but how many people... my vote. You know, how many people... Are, uh, I see that thing... But he's hated by his own people. Yeah. Well, just like you're hated. Hmm? You know, you felt the hate. Oh, yeah. Lots because of people if you're hate. a vehicle for the truth, you're going to be hated. It's guaranteed. I know, but when I walk around town... And people say, are you Roy Masters? Yeah. But, you know, the whole town thinks I'm something else. But when they see me, they're, they're just as polite as they could be. <laughs> That's yeah. all. But it's funny how they've, they've all been... Miss, I've come across people that hate you, think you are this, this, and that, and they've never had media. one, one moment media. of exposure to you in any way whatsoever. But they're, they gravitate to the lie. That's something right. in them wants to judge you. Because they fear that truth. And just look at those, th those Democrats holding their hands up with yeah. mob justice. Mob justice. And don't shoot. That's your representative of a certain body of people. And this is dangerous. Innocence is guilt. Guilt is innocence. Upside down. Because everybody has support. Drugs, alcohol, fiendship, everything, music, sex. They got a lot of it. And they get worse. The more they have, the worse they get. They either get sicker or worser, if such a word, as wicked. If they have nothing, then they get worse, worser, no such word, as wickedness, as pleasure to kill. See, I, I've always believed that the Antichrist is not a person, but a mindset in a large group of people. And I think the Antichrist that's is reason, upon us right now reasonable. in the people. That is reasonable. And maybe I have something to share in that direction. And I do hope that my audience understand 
that I'm 70, 87, I want to say 70. I'm 87 years old. I'm strong as a horse, a little bit weak in the leg still. Um, I'll be running and swimming pretty soon. And I'm going to do a seminar in Los Angeles if you want to be, if you want to be there all day. But you got me here, you really don't need to come. You got everything you need here. I do thank you for, unless you have a question. I have a question. Oh, please. Yes, I um, was hoping you might be able to explain um, when you said the identity you have identifies with the body. The what? The identity. Oh, the identity, yes. We have identifies with It's the, the it entity. It entity, yes. yes. It's the entity. The entity is, has, a, has a technical psychological name and it is identity crisis. But they don't know what the identity is. They don't really know it's a spirit. Yeah, yeah, when, thinking, yeah, when you said it, it frightened something in me. But I, but anyway, and which brings me to my other point. Is this normal? I think I've heard you mention it before, but my quiet time is excruciatingly painful. It's like it hurts so but bad. But if you could realize... I mean tremendously. I understand that. The like someone's is, pulling my flesh. I understand it. But it, it, what it requires is something called faith. Because if you don't have the faith, then you can't stop trying to fix yourself and being angry at the fact that you're getting worse. That's interesting. You, you, you mentioned faith because that was going to be my next question. Because... I'm getting a little glimpse of it, mm -hmm. but there's another part that's, that's saying I'm being irresponsible, like I have to do something. I know, but that's, uh, a, that's uh, a lie. Yeah. That, is the, that is the identity that makes you do what's impossible. Yes. To save yourself from what it has done through you. It's yes. a game. And the, minute you, the, the reason why I get you to be objective and if you succeed in the objective thing, with even the seven-minute meditation would work just very well for that. That's all you need, really, right. is to stand back and say, that's not me, that's a lie. And the trouble is you tend to believe the lie because you think it, and you think your thoughts are yours. Do I not. want to believe it, or no. am I corrupted in some no, way? No, you're here because you're a decent person. I know you are troubled. But I know a good person that is persistent coming here to clarify something. I hope I just clarified it. It isn't you that did these things, but sin that made a home in me. Where did you read that in the Bible? It, it was Paul, or Saul, that became Paul on the road to Damascus when he was converted and having never met Jesus. Okay? And when he recovered, one of the things he uttered in his writings he says, the things I do, the, the bad things I do, I do not want to do, I do. The good things I don't want to do, I want to do, I cannot. See, So, therefore, it's not me who doth these things, but sin that has made a home in me. He got it. It's one of the, one of the plainest things in the Bible, and you can just walk right by that. What is meaning? I'm saying to you, now listen carefully to me, you and me, we are just connected, right, right this minute? Okay. Do you trust what is in me, which isn't Roy? Of course, of course, yes. Do you trust that I've gone through similar things? Yes. And succeeded and therefore proved it? Yes. Just so I proved the, the gas thing. I have to go through things to, to, to tell you that you may not have heart trouble and you better be careful of the doctor and take you to the hospital, especially the ones here. See, I can tell you from experience, and better than from a book. So I got experience of what you're going through. And, so, and I've seen it with all other people. It's the same voice. It's the reason why you, you need to be more responsible. And therefore, but it's done this thing through you, and you thought it's you that did it. If you can separate the you from the entity, see, 
If you can see that this isn't you and you never ever did anything wrong in your whole life. It was it that got in you when you were young and grew. As if it was you and you're trying to make yourself a better person and trying to be good but don't know what good is. Only God is good. And therefore you have to try to... So therefore whatever problem you have, the voice says you've got to be good at. That's nice, but you've got to be better than that. And the more you're better than that, the worse you become. And you're more tormented. That torment will go away. If you trust what I say. It, 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 trusting what I'm saying is, it makes sense. That's all it sounds like. It's all like it feels like in a person. That makes sense. Especially if it's something very serious. And all of a sudden it makes sense. Bang! It's gone. And it may come back again to play with you. Oh, you really didn't lock the door. Go screw yourself. Excuse the expression. You don't hear a preacher talk like this, do you? I do. All that thing is trying to do is get you involved in saving yourself. And if you can accept one truth, of yourself you can do nothing, you're going to be free. Of yourself, you cannot save yourself. Understand that. Even Jesus says, of myself I can do nothing. The Father within me acts through me. I just changed the word to it's okay. How do you feel now? There's a thing inside you that stirs. Yeah, it's... Uh... I'll just leave you alone. Okay, thank you. Yeah, yeah, I'll leave you alone with that. Well, it's been nice having you. I do hope you enjoy our grounds. And maybe you can get Tim to give you a ride around in, in his four-wheel drive little tractor. And see how beautiful our friend has made this place. And how grateful we all should be in, in, in an invisible person who doesn't like to boast about he does what he does. Thank you very much. We have to listen. Did you bring sandwiches? No? Yes. Okay, but... If you didn't, and if you still want sandwiches, we got sandwiches. No charge. You just give a donation wherever it is, and that, that pays for it. Okay? Thank you. And enjoy the place. You, know, you go fishing. You go, bring your fishing rod. <laughs>